Welcome to the fourth episode of Unexceptional Moms. I am Ellen Stembo and... And I'm Erin Lorraine. Today we're going to be talking about isolation in moms of children with special needs. So we're going to share with you the struggles of becoming isolated and then also um, about how to prevent isolation or even pull out of it if you're already in it. Yeah, and we have a freebie for you as usual as we try to have freebies every week and we have an isolation prevention guide. So if you go to ellenstoma.com forward slash episode four, that's the number four, there is going to be an orange button. You click on it and you're going to get that guide. So to get started, Erin, actually you wrote a blog post for me years ago. Yes. About special needs families being isolated. And it's probably one of the most popular blog posts on my blog, which I will link to that again so people can go back to it. And we were just saying, if you go on Google, your post is one of the first things that comes up. We are right. Because um, it was really good and it was to the point. And I think what you shared is what a lot of us struggle with. Right. And it was just a realistic look at where I was at that time. Um, it was just so hard to do things. And, and to th this day, it still is. And one of the, the comments I made is, you know, people will say, oh, come over. We'll just let the kids play in the basement. Well, I can't do that. My kids have to have eyes on them at all times. And when I do get together with people um, and the kids are involved, I don't get any time to relax and talk to people because I'm chasing children, especially if it's at someone else's house. Um, so it's easier into my house and that brings up a whole nother area of issues which is is my house clean do I have something to feed them and I've got to be honest with you more times than not I think it's just not worth it and that then leads into that isolation really quickly right it's not being able to go somewhere because you can't really fully participate at least not right. with the other adults or at home where it becomes work or it feels like work. You know, yeah. I, and one of the first experiences I had with that, Oksana had not been home very long at all. And, you know, it's interesting, parenting, I, I have my degree in special education, but parenting a child with special needs is no different than educating them because you have to think through every little detail of their lives and I just wasn't there yet. Now it's such a natural part of what I do. But at the time we got invited to a homeschool park outing. And I was so excited to get out and talk to some other moms. And we went to the park and all the moms sat on, under the pavilion while all their kids played at the park. Well, Oksana can play at a park independently. And so I was on the park with, at the park with all the children while all the moms were sitting under the the pavilion talking and I just I had not realized that would happen of course now I'm like of course hello but at the time it was also new to me and it was just shocking and I just felt very lonely and I never did it again after that you know and I think I wonder how many of us actually have had to go through that because I remember my mops group because I used to attend a mops group I think every Friday night was a date at the park and that's exactly what happened even when Nicole was little when she was a baby you know she would stay with me and Ellie could go run around but as she got older I had to be in the equipment with her to help her yes. and that's what would happen all the moms would be sitting on their picnic blankets and I was there with my kid which ended up I was there taking care of everybody's kids, or it felt that way. So if there were any kids fighting or any disputes, I was the adult there to say something. Or if the kids exactly. needed something, they would ask me, and I stopped going. And here's the thing. I don't remember anybody calling to say, hey, we haven't seen you there for a while, hmm. which then, again, contributes to the isolation because you feel like they didn't even notice I wasn't there. Right. And or some they, of that is our own fault, right? I mean, there's, we certainly have our part in this. Oh, absolutely, yes. As much as we say, and we will get to that as well then. Uh, sometimes it's yeah. easier to yeah. look at what other people are not doing right without really recognizing, mm -hmm. is there something that I could do to help with that? Um, right. But the isolation, 
is very real. I think sometimes the isolation happens even in conversations. And I'm sure that it's happened to you that you're with other parents and you start talking and their life experiences and what they're talking about as relevant things are so different from what you experience in your life because of our kids having disabilities that you just feel like an outsider just automatically. I had that happen once when they add a group of people asked how my girls were doing and I shared something with them and and you could hear crickets and then someone changed the subject yes. and I was a little shocked by that <laughs> but it happens and I think that's what's hard and you hear especially it's parents sometimes you know the joke that you know all these parents are talking about how hard it is that their kid started walking early and they're getting into everything and they don't know what to do. And here you're thinking, okay, my child has cerebral palsy. They're seven and they can't walk. So shut up. I mean, you think about it, obviously you don't say it out loud. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, that's where you start recognizing that, yeah, our life can be pretty different. Yeah. And I think just that feeling is incredibly isolating mm -hmm. but maybe it's not the circumstance you can be around people and feel very much alone very much yes yes another example that i gave in that blog was birthday parties mm -hmm. and we're at a better place with this now but at the time that i wrote that um we learned quickly that oksana could not handle any birthday party in the evening and so we'd get all these birthday invitations and we would rsvp no all the time because the combination of being in the evening when she's already tired, it's close to bedtime, and then the overstimulation ended in an absolute meltdown every single time. And so we had to just stop doing them. And again, it just, and there can be um, an aspect of self-pity in this too, where you start to think, I can't do anything because of the situation I, I'm in. So, um, and again, that all goes back to everything we've talked about, self-care and faith and all those things to keep you in a positive mindset. But it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're bringing up birthday parties, I do know that that is a really hard spot for some, especially its parents, because I do think some of us experience the fact that our kids don't get invited as much to birthday parties. Or when our kids have a birthday party, people don't show up because I've heard both. Now, I have been where you're at, where we have had to say no. And I feel like if we say no enough, it's almost like then my kid doesn't get invited. Um, right. But my kids require me to stay at a birthday party. Yes. I can't just drop them off mm -hmm. and then go unless it's someone that knows my kids really, really well. So it would be a close friend, in which case that close friend might even be asking me to help with the birthday party. Mm -hmm. So I had instances where she would be invited and I would call and say, we would love to come, but how do you feel about me staying? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then you have the kids dealing with the fact like, well, why is your mom here? You know, and that can, again, make our families seem a little bit more different, which we are. We are a little bit more different. Um, and, you know, my youngest daughter who has Down syndrome, she's about to have a birthday party, and she has never cared about birthday parties. But she finally decided she wants to have one, and she planned it, and she wanted to invite three girls. So I had to think about what is the best way to do it so that we don't end up being one of those families who nobody shows up to the birthday party. I have had birthday parties and invited children that she really didn't even know just to have people at the party because, yeah. quite frankly, friends have been few and far between. Um, and, and much of that is due to behaviors, and it's just a reality of what it is. But I've invited my friends' kids because I knew they would bring them, and we'd have kids there. Yes, and that is not unusual. I mean, as you say that, um, friendships are harder for our kids. Yes, that's the reality. And it is because of disability and it is because of disability attitudes, even amongst kids, but kids oh, sure. learn from their parents. I mean, it's, um, it's the unfortunate thing about disability that not everybody is comfortable with disability. Um, so I know for, for us, when we have had anything with our other kids, that's exactly what we do. We're inviting 
of family. We're inviting people from church. We're inviting friends that have kids that are about the same age. So that's how we get those kids. But this time, when Nicole was specific, she wanted to invite three friends. And those are the only three friends she wants for her birthday party. So, okay. you know, I had to come up with how do I do it? So I got on the phone and I called each parent individually and I was very open with them and I shared with them, listen, this is kind of a big deal for her. This is the first time that she wants to do this. This is what she wants to do. She loves your daughter. She's one of the friends that Nicole talks about all the time. We would be thrilled to have her be able to come. And at least two parents that I have connected with, you know, they're saying, oh, count our daughter in. So. Yeah. It was not a normal invitation. I have never had to do that for my oldest daughter's birthday right. parties. Right. You know, because it doesn't require that extra step and that extra connection and to even uh, make it a big deal, you know, very inviting you to this. And it's kind of a big deal for, for her and for her family. And it would be so exciting to have you be a part of it. But I do know that birthdays are isolating for mm -hmm. a lot of families. And you see it on um, the internet. I mean, some of yeah. the big stories lately have been children who invite people to their birthday party and no one shows up and those kind right. of things. Yeah. Right. And that's, you know, the whole in the children, but that's, that in itself is isolating to the, to the parents as well. Oh, it is. And it's disheartening. I mean, for everybody. And I think about the kids who then get hurt, you know, because can you imagine being a child, uh, you know, kids with disabilities, they have feelings just like everybody else. And to not have anybody show up or to not have anybody call to say happy birthday, those things are a big deal. And then again, as parents, we take that in and we feel isolated. We feel isolated for our mm -hmm. community, from the school, from, um, just from the parent community that's out there. And sometimes even from family. Because even within family, we can have that. Absolutely. And even within the community of parents with special needs, I mean, just like any other community of parents, you're going to have your people that don't like the way you do it or don't like, mm -hmm. you know, they don't agree with that method or this method or this is the only right way. And then you start to question yourself and it's just, it's hard parenting any child. But when you add in the special needs, it's especially challenging. You know, I think we would all agree that when you have really young kids, there is a certain sense of isolation for most moms that's, you know, mm -hmm. that are home with yeah. their kids. Especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think when you add disability to the mix, um, for, for a lot of us, it feels like you don't move out of that isolation stage, even as your kids get older. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because we don't parent typical kids. And again, we don't have as many things in common. Maybe our kids are not able to do what the other kids are doing. And so many events that surround even the parent interactions are surrounded, you know, around children activities. And when our mm -hmm. kids can't participate into them, you create that isolation. Okay, so what do we do to prevent it? What do we do to prevent it? Okay, so we kind of talked about this shortly, but I, I do think that we have a role to play into this and we need to yes. initiate and we need to initiate friendships too, that we can sit there and say, nobody's calling me, but how op often do we pick up the phone to call someone? Right. right. You know, I had a friend who, um, a few years ago, she actually sent me a message and she said, you know, I'm the one that calls you all the time. I'm the one that is asking you to do stuff all the time. I've never thought of you asking me anytime. So do you want to be friends? And, and it, it was an eye opener for me because I recognized that it was very comfortable for me to allow her to initiate, but I wasn't right. doing that back very often. And I'm really glad that she called me up on that because I thought, you know, yes, I have kids with disabilities and, you know, yes, sometimes I'm exhausted, but if I really want to have friends, then I really need to be a good friend. I mean, I need to be that person too. I have a friend or two that have gotten a text from me at times saying, we're just in a really hard place right now, but don't forget me. I, I'm here. I'm coming back. I just need some time. And 
just to keep that connection with them, but let them know that um, I, I can't call you right now. I can't stay on top of what's happening in your life. Just let me get through what's happening right now and we will reconnect. And people have been very, very supportive um, of that and been right there when I was ready again. I love that. And you know that that kind of ties in with what we were talking about before, which was to be vulnerable and let people in, you know, to yes. be willing to share and be honest with other people. Um, well, which is hard because like we just discussed, sometimes you didn't, you hear crickets. Yeah. But sometimes you do that and you get compassion and understanding and a great friendship. One of my best friends has no children with special needs, but she hears me and she understands me and she makes a point um, to be a part of my life. And that is so valuable. If I pushed her aside just because she didn't have kids with special needs and didn't open up to her, I would have missed out on that. Right. And, you know, I think that there is a beauty in being vulnerable. I am a huge fan of being a part of a vulnerable community just because mm -hmm. I think it's very authentic and it's very real. And even when we are not connecting with other people who have kids with special needs, if we're willing to be vulnerable, it allows other people to be vulnerable too. So I also have friends who don't have kids with disabilities, but they are very open about their lives yeah, with me because I'm willing to be open with them. So they know our struggles. Again, if it's a hard day, I've also been the one that has said, you know, we're having a really hard time right now. And I just don't have the energy to go and have coffee after the kids are in bed because I'm going to crawl in bed myself. Mm -hmm. um, but just the conversations and really the depth of those friendships has grown because of being willing to be vulnerable. And Maybe it's a good thing to stress out. Being vulnerable doesn't mean just pouring your heart out and just kind of just venting because that's not vulnerability. You know, there's some humility that comes with it and saying, I really appreciate you and I want this to work, but this is what's happening in my life. And that's why I'm feeling so overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it could be, can you help me? Which we talked about that when we talked about um, taking care of okay. ourselves. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to ask for help, but Sometimes, you know, those blessings are just waiting for us mm -hmm. if we are willing mm -hmm. to ask for help. And that's part of being vulnerable and keeps right. us from being isolated because you're connecting with someone when you're sharing. Right. <clears throat> right. And I find joy and purpose in helping other people when they're struggling too. And so um, it, it goes both ways very much when you're able to be vulnerable in a relationship like that. Absolutely. So another thing that we came up with was to be willing to try again and again and again. And that's really that's hard. hard. I have to be honest. I'm, I'm tired and um, I have enough to worry about that I will often won't chase you. But sometimes um, when a friendship is worth it, people need to be chased a little bit. Yes. And that's the trying again and again and again. And I think yes. for other situations, you know, sometimes, um, at least my family, we've done that, that you try an activity and it just doesn't go so well. And you think, mm -hmm. is it worth trying it again? Mm -hmm. So we could not try it again or we could try it again. And I know that this is a silly example, but um, my youngest daughter could not handle a movie theater at all mm -hmm. for the longest time. And to the point that sometimes it would say, is it even worth trying to go? And right. we, what we decided to do was that we would go, when we would buy the ticket, we would say, most likely my daughter is not going to be able to make it through the movie theater. Can we get our money back? And we never had anybody say no. They said, if you leave within the first 15 minutes, you can. And that happened a lot of times until finally she sat through one movie, you know, one movie. And then the second time it was easier and then it was easier. So I think, again, there could be situations where we say, I'm not going to try again. But the more we do it, we all kind of learn together. I mean, even right. the experience with a dentist with 
Anya that you just had. <laughs> yes. that she always fought and fought and fought and fought. You could have said, forget it. We're never going to the dentist because it's a fight. We had the same thing at the dentist with Nicole. I could have said, well, I guess she's not going to go to the dentist because I get a workout just holding her down. Yes. Plus two other, you know, nurses. Yes. There's a person doing her teeth. I mean, it was terrible. But eventually our kids get used to it, right? So they grow out of it and they do much better. Not that they love it yet, but they do much better. Right. And if we could think of it that way about some of the situations that we approach that, you know, some times that gathering at school is overwhelming and is it worth going but maybe we just plan to go we're just going to go for five minutes maybe we're just going to go for 10 minutes and it's trying again and trying again and trying again and being willing to put the effort and the energy to go mm -hmm. and i know that sometimes i want to say it's not even worth it because i we've been there in our family I've Yes. <laughs> yes. And there are some things that aren't worth it, but you have to yes. judge, you know. Yes. And we have said no to some things. And then you hear, you know, other people that participated and it was so great and wonderful. And, and then you feel isolated, but you have to put yourself out there in order to be mm -hmm. a part of life and what's happening. And sometimes you go and it's fantastic and you're so glad you did. Yes. Those surprises do happen. Yes. And they're so good because I think then they remind us that it's okay to try. Um, right. Even if you might fail, you know, even if it might not be the best situation, just to be able to try and to put yourself out there with other people. I'm glad we're doing this because I'm being encouraged right now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the other thing to help with isolation is to connect with other people who get your life. Bingo. Yes. That's been my go-to. When I find another mom with a kid with special needs or specifically if it's something like what we're struggling with, are like no other. Oh, yeah. Those connections are invaluable and they do, they, they happen. And I would say um, you and I would have, would have never connected if we didn't have kids with disabilities, first of all. Yeah, we're in different states. Yeah. Uh, yeah, different states, different, you know, lives you could say before then. Um, but there is such a, a beautiful, you know, beautiful thing of finding people that get your life in a personal way. And I actually remember the very first time that we walked into a support group and it was a Down syndrome support group. And Nicole was really little at the time. So it was very helpful to hear that other parents felt the same things that I did, that mm -hmm. I was not alone mm -hmm. even in my feelings and my struggles. And yes. I think now that she's older, you know, then I, I like to be a part of a group that's encouraging, you know, and people that do understand the joys and people who understand the challenges, which now, I'm going to, no, go ahead. I was going to say, and that's part of even why we wanted to do this podcast, right? Because yes. we want special needs parents, moms, I'm guessing mostly moms are going to be listening to us to know that they're not alone, mm -hmm. that there are like-minded people who do get it, then um, yes, sometimes we feel alone and isolated, but some of us are there. We're present and we do get it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, two quick things. One is I think a face-to-face -face is ideal, but Facebook is a great place to find those people. Yes. There are great groups of people on Facebook who are walking through what you're walking through and can be a wonderful support. Um, social media, that's one of the blessings of social media. But finding someone in your community, I think, is ideal. Have coffee, share life. And the other thing I'm going to plug there when you said support groups is um, if anyone is listening who has a child with mental illness who hasn't found NAMI, you need to find NAMI, N-A-M-I, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We took a class called Basics, which is for parents of children with mental illness. And I remember the first time when I started sharing something about Oksana and everyone in the room was going like this and I went, oh my goodness, it's normal here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eyes are bugging out of their head. And oh, I, that was such an incredible. 
mental experience, if, even if you have a um, adult in your life with mental illness or you are an adult with mental illness, NAMI has something for everyone. It's amazing. So there's my plug. Yes. And th but those groups are so good that they're out there. I mean, and they're powerful. But I think that is the reason why I have even gone to all the way to St. Louis the first time I went there was to go to a Down syndrome gathering. So, right. And right. I remember that. Yes. And it started with an online group. So a bunch of moms, we had all met online. We decided to actually have a face-to-face -face get together. And I remember something happened with Nicole at a restaurant and I was mortified. And then I realized, wait a second, everybody here gets it and they deal with it all the time. And so, so nice. On that topic, let's plug real quick also Johnny and Friends. Oh, they yeah. They have annual retreats throughout the United States. And when you said that, it, it brought to mind disability is just so, it's celebrated and it's normal there and kids make noises and kids do things and no one blinks. It's like a little piece of heaven on earth and it parents is. get refreshed and renewed and kids have a blast. And um, maybe, can you link to that on your website I as will. well? Absolutely. Okay. I will link to the retreats. Yes. Because yes. you went um, two years ago, the first time, I think, wasn't it two years ago? Three, wasn't it? Because was we three? went and then you went with us and yes. then we missed last year. That's right. But we I remember after the first time that you went there, you came back and you said you are coming with us next year because this is incredible. And when we got to go, it was it, everywhere you look. Yeah. It's disability. I mean, even yes. for my oldest typical daughter to be able to, to, to be there, I remember she said, I just feel like we were all a part of a big family. Like everybody knows our life. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands. And for her, it was incredibly powerful. My shy little it's girl. incredible for the sibling. Yes. Mm -hmm. My shy little girl who doesn't do anything, who played the piano in front of everybody for the mm -hmm. talent show, because there's a talent show, and who at the end when they said, if anybody wants to share, here she goes, nine years old, to go and share. What an incredible blessing it was for her to be there. So yes, families, you, if you're listening, you need to look into the Johnny and Friends retreats. I think everybody needs to go yeah. at least once. It will be the best vacation of your life and you will make yes. meaningful connections that will last for a long, long time. It, it is an isolation buster for sure. Oh, yes, it is. Everybody belongs there and everybody's mm -hmm. connected. I mean, they do great things for the kids with disabilities, for the siblings, for the moms, for the dads, for the marriage. I mean, yes. We just right sing. into our next point, Ellen. Yes. Another way to <laughs> fight isolation <laughs> is to... You say it. Focus on your marriage. Yes. Focus on that marriage. Preserve your marriage. I mean, marriage is hard work, no matter what. That's right. Um, it's really hard. And then you add disability into the mix, and it presents a whole new set of challenges that we don't even have time to address, but we are doing an entire podcast on marriage um, yes. coming up in a it's going to be a few weeks. Um, I'm not sure exactly when yet, but yeah. Yes. Um, but that is so important because... It's rates high for families with children with special needs. And um, that's a real... It's a passion of, of mine and my husband's. We were on staff with Family Life for five years, which is a ministry to marriages and families under uh, CRU, which used to be Campus Crusade for Christ. So marriages are our passion. Um, we're doing a uh, breakout session at a marriage retreat for our church for marriages um, of children that have children with special needs. So it will definitely be one of our topics and something I'm very, very passionate about. Yeah. And the reality is there are so many components that can play into a marriage. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't have time to talk about that. But ultimately, you know, we all recognize that our spouse is supposed to be our best friend. Mm -hmm. And that is the most deep, intimate, real connection that we get to have. Um, 
that hopefully we do have and investing in the marriage to to have that strong bond it's so important because if the marriage is not doing well right there that's the biggest isolation you're going to have that even within your own home you feel alone exactly. Exactly. And, and i know that even talking about that i know that some people listening i know that you know that can just be really hard to hear if the marriage is not doing okay uh -huh. um which is why we're going to talk about that so um one send us a message if you would like us to pray because both Aaron and I would be praying for you. And um, and as we're going to be talking about that, you know, ways to inv invest in, in your marriage. I have been doing a year of thankfulness this year. And mm -hmm. every day there's something I'm thankful for. And it has completely changed my outlook in life. Because this is not an easy year for my family at all. But somehow I just feel good about it. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just the outlook is different. And I remember at some, some time this uh, summer, I decided that I uh, should try to do that with my husband too. And every day tell him something that I'm thankful for or something that he's done. And, you know, sometimes we don't do a lot of thanking each other. I mean, not just us, but I think mm -hmm. in general, you know, you forget that you're doing things together and, and to have that positive, you know, thinking that, those positive things about my husband really goes a long way. It's because there's always something that I can be thankful for. He does a lot with the kids. He does a lot around the house. He does a lot for me. And I truly am thankful. So mm -hmm. I need to tell him that. Which I've never even so, told you that before, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take the marriage relationship and stretch it out a little bit regarding isolation, I also think we have found it so valuable to have couple friends. Yeah, a couple that we can have fun with and be real with. Um, so we are also in a small group, and we have four other couples in our small group that are just so precious to us that we can be real with and have fun with and laugh with. And oh, do we get ridiculously silly? And it is so fun. And that small group idea, I did not want to do it. I did not want to do it. It was more, it was one of those, it's more effort than it's worth. The child care, the this, the that. And my husband really pushed for it because of his own feelings of isolation. And it's been the best thing we ever did. And I know you do love your small group. We do. So, so here's the reality, you know, for struggles for other people. The last time that Andy and I hung out with a couple of friends was when we came to visit you guys. And that's been a month. I mean, right now, I would say you guys are a couple friends and we live in different states. Yes, right. Right. But that's a reality. Yeah. It is the reality yeah. for a lot of people. So maybe if you can find a small group, get connected. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which then goes into finding a church. And that's going to be a whole topic for us, too. That's going to be a whole topic <laughs> because we're so connected in so many ways. So those are things to help. Now, uh, again, so the freebie that we have is the isolation prevention guide, which we're going to have some things that we talked about. Uh, there's going to be some other things that are helpful, um, especially if you are someone who maybe struggles with depression or anxiety and you naturally want to isolate yourself. We're going to have some um, some little tips for, for that. It's a free little guide. Again, it's ellenstumble.com forward slash episode four altogether, the number four. And um, yeah, so today we, so as we wrap up, we have talked about isolation, what leads us to isolation, ways to hopefully prevent it, which brought up so many other topics that we yes, can address. It did. <laughs> it did. Um, and then the freebie, that guide. Um, anything else that you would add, Erin? No, no, not offhand. Did we discuss what we're discussing next week? Um, oh, no, we haven't. So next week, we're going to be talking about Down syndrome. Oh, that's right. Yes. And in the future, we've got marriage. We've got, we're hoping to have Jillian Marchenko on. We're going to discuss um, finding a church or, or issues in the church for families of children with special needs. But yes, next week, Down Syndrome, because October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. 
That's right. And we both have children with Down syndrome. So if you have a child with Down syndrome, you will relate. If you don't, you can learn all about Down syndrome. Plus, I think the reality, parenting kids with disabilities, there's so many things that it doesn't matter what the disability is. We understand each other. We have that common Absolutely. ground. I do wonder if Anya and Nicole need to make appearances next week. Oh, that would be sweet, huh? For those that are watching the videos, they could see them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The two rascals. The two rascals. <laughs> they, they both have that for a nickname for a reason. Although I have to say, uh, when it comes to isolation, for my family particularly, now that my kids are getting older, uh, we have less of that isolation because they um, are able to participate in social activities much, much better than they did before. So, and we aren't at all. Right. And you're not. <laughs> but, you know, but that shows how, you know, how different and how unique each family can be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. You know, so, you know, before we go, I was going to, I just thought about the fact that something that you do to prevent isolation, you have your girls involved in quite a few events that are specific for kids with disabilities. So I think about, the cheer squat that your girls go to that we got to come and visit. That's a really phenomenal. A that is a great point. As the parent, right, my kids are loving it and enjoying it. They're both cheerleaders, but I have a great little community of cheer moms there, which it's hilarious that we are even that because most of us are the anti-cheerleader, right? <laughs> but our kids are loving it. We connect with each other. Um, we sit and we get to chit chat and watch our kids and um, we've developed great relationships there. That's an excellent point. Yep. So there you go. For a way to combat that isolation. If you can find events that are specifically targeted for kids with disabilities where they're going to have a one-on-one -on -one and they are ready for our kids, those are situations where as parents, we actually get to interact and be parents. Yes. Yes. And be grown-ups, I guess, friends. Yes. We get to be friends. So there you go. We had a little nugget of wisdom before we were done wrapping up. So, so next week, episode six, Down Syndrome. Yes. Down syndrome for next episode. That will be episode five. Five, sorry, five. Yes. And um, yes, we're going to have everything figured out with iTunes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get it figured out. Yeah. So until then, guys, have a great week. Bye.